Hello out there in Rhino land, uh, here for a, a deep dive into the Rhino Hi-Fi series. My name is Jason Jones, I'm from the Rhino a &R team, and I'm here with my cohort, Steve Woolard from the Rhino a &R yes, team. Yes, he is. And Grammy award-winning Patrick Milligan from the a &R team. Yep. And we are here to do a deep dive into the Rhino Hi-Fi series. 2.0. 2.0. Two new releases. Look at right that. now. Here they are. Aren't they beautiful? This is our high-end audiophile series. This is the second batch of releases. We're doing all of these cut from original analog tapes by mm -hmm. Kevin Gray at Coherent Audio, sort of the most revered Triple mastering A. engineer. Triple A, y'all. Triple A. Triple A, yo. <clears throat> As you can see here, this is a sealed copy of one of our new releases. This is Jocko Pistorius's word of mouth. Uh, beautiful packaging. There's an open one with this nice uh, OB band here telling you what's going on here, which we're telling you about. And they're pressed on a 180 gram vinyl at Optimal, the pretty agreed upon best European pressing plant there is. We we love Optimal. Yeah. Super quiet pressings. Yep. Good vinyl. Really clean, good vinyl. Yeah. Yep. So. And these are packaged in really beautiful, heavyweight, glossy tip-on uh, gatefold sleeves. And each of the new releases has an insert as well. Yes. That shows you the actual tape boxes. As I mentioned, analog tapes here, cut yeah. from analog tapes. Right. These actual tapes. So right. you see the image there of side one on the front, side sure. two on the back. And that's what Kevin used to cut these tapes. In fact, we had to uh, hurry and get the tapes back from him to scan them to make this booklet. <laughs> right. Take um, oh, no, really? Yes. Yeah. But each of these, each booklet then inside has liner notes by somebody involved in the making of the album. We're really trying to highlight how these records were made, why they sound so great. This one is by Ricky Schultz, who signed Jocko to Warner Brothers in, the, in 1980, I believe. Mm -hmm and talks about the making of this album. You can see some like studio ephemera there from really tape notes and stuff, wonderful photos. There. This was something that Ricky had written previously and for some of the other releases we're doing new notes by like the cars we did, Elliot Easton talked about the making of the record. So yeah. each of these requires a bit of a different approach but just really getting into the making of the record, some of the technical aspects, why they sound so good. And just, you know, we're all geeks up here and yeah. we're appealing to our fellow geeks out there that like these super high-end audiophile releases. That's pretty. And we're really proud of these. And they sound amazing. Yeah, they sound great. They really do. They will show off your hi-fi. Yes, they will. Yeah. Hip yeah. and hi-fi. Yeah. So this this gatefold here, this was this was originally the inner sleeve of the record, right? I believe so, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So we did that so we can use these very nice rice paper sleeves Yeah. to protect the record. Keep them, keep them in good shape. Yeah. The first Two in the series were so well received. The Cars one sold out like in two weeks. Any of these you're interested in, I would just say buy yeah. them before they're gone. Rhino.com. they go fast. Rhino.com. Exclusively. They're exclusive. Yeah. Limited editions of 5,000. Yeah. So, buy them now. Yeah. Yep. Don't miss out. Yep. You don't want to. It's a lot of disappointed Cars fans that didn't <laughs> get in time. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. This record in particular, too, this is something that we're trying to do with this series a bit. We're picking releases that are revered, great sounding records, but we're also trying to give some attention to some things that maybe have been ignored for a while. Mm -hmm. And we really felt yeah. like this Jaco Pistorius album, which is a brilliant album by a brilliant musician. It's, it's just, yeah. if you're familiar with Jocko, any of his work with Weather Report, the, the run of records he made with Joni Mitchell, he's a great musician, but this record really shows him as a great composer, an arranger. There's stuff on here that's familiar in terms of Weather Report, you know, some of the same musicians, Peter Erskine, yeah. Wayne Shorter's on the record. But there, there's a couple of tracks that are very unique in that Jocko is really getting into sort of songwriting and arranging. And there's some really lush kinds of beautiful... It's a very emotional record. Yeah, yeah. It's so it's got a lot of heart record. to it. Um, he does a really interesting version of the Beatles' Blackbird. He does some box stuff on bass that no human should be able to play. Oh, dude, and John and Mary. Yeah, that John is, and Mary, yeah. It's like a big uh, suite on, on the record, which is, is incredible. Song. You know, it came out in 1981, right at the end of his run of stuff that he did with Joni. Herbie Hancock's on this record, Wayne Shorter, Michael Brecker. It's an interesting record, too, because it, it's, it's a jazz record, but it has some really interesting textures to it, because... He involved Toots Thielman, who was a Belgian musician who played guitar, but more, more sort of famously harmonica, jazz harmonica. Yeah. Just a monster. And an amazing whistler, too. <laughs> and he whistles on the record. There's That's harmonica amazing. on the record. Uh, great. Wow. So it's some interesting textures, some interesting arrangements and different things. 
And if you haven't heard this record, it's it's glorious and it sounds wonderful. And of course, Kevin Gray did a, a perfect job on it. It's just stellar sounding. Also, this is the very first time that this record's ever been reissued on vinyl. Since it first came out, yeah. yes. And now, that, again, that's part of what we're trying to give some yeah. love to some some records that have sort of been overlooked. And I think, you know, Jocko is a revered musician and a lot of people do love this album, but I think yeah. it's just, it's time to get it out to a bigger audience. And I think when people hear how it sounds, they're going to love it. So. Well, every, you know, everyone seemingly knows the debut. Yeah. But don't really know this record. Yeah, and the debut is a great record, yeah. uh, the epic record. I bought that record when it came out and I loved it. But this is, this is something totally unique. It's like, not to get too geeky, but if you're into sort of, large jazz ensemble west coast kind of cool jazz stuff it's almost like a modern iteration yeah, of no, that totally. it's really cool mm -hmm. lush arrangements and yeah so it's really if, if you're looking to discover something this is a perfect discovery kind of record absolutely now it'll show off your hi-fi there yes. you go <laughs> there you go best of both worlds never right? sounded better you're hip and you sound good yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right and the second record in it is by van the man van morrison <laughs> yeah we really wanted to do a Van Morrison album, and I have to tell anybody that's watching out there that while, yes, trade it out. There you go. While Warner released many Van Morrison albums in the 70s, we only now control three of them. Right. So it's Astro Astro Weeks, Moon Dance, Moon Dance, and this one. And this one. Wish we still had Tupelo Honey, but we don't. We don't. And we've we don't. seen a lot of requests for that, but we don't have it. Yeah. Moon Dance very popular wonderful album mm -hmm. the analog tapes are damaged we can't really do a hi-fi of that so right, right. but stay tuned for yeah. some other things yeah this is such a great album i think this album kind of in a way set the template for the the the, the albums that came yeah. after it this yeah. is really sort of a, a oh, mission a statement oh, of a, man. a million percent and it's a, such a great sounding record domino blue money okay which yes. is better domino or blue money I'm Team Domino. Uh, I like Blue Money. I'm Domino. Oh, but it's a toss-up. That's all right. It's a toss-up. Okay. But a great sounding record. Um, You've been outvoted. One of, That's okay. Not the first one of the time. engineer, the uh, recording engineer and mixing engineer, Elliot Shiner, on this record was interviewed uh, by our good friend Corey Fry for liner notes for this. So Elliot talks about the making of the record. Again, kind of what makes it sound so good. Um, I just always love this record um i this might be the first van morrison record i bought i think because really? i was such a, a domino fan oh really yeah mine was tupelo honey okay that might have been the second one <laughs> <laughs> mine was moon dance okay all right okay Did you? Yeah. but here we go again the booklet um oh. the copy of the tape box you're you're hearing this basically on this record um, and I have to say, we, we uh, the first two releases we were talking about, we did the Cars and Coltrane Sound. Mm -hmm. We did an event here in town, mm -hmm. listening to those, and Elliot Easton of the Cars was there, and when we listened to the cut of the Cars there, he said he's never heard anything that sounded as much like the tape in the studio as that. So right. that gives you an right. idea. Yeah. So yeah. these are the tapes cut direct to, to Lacquers by Kevin Gray, the, the master of mastering. Mm -hmm. Here you see, again, we're talking about Studio Ephemera, some notes from the sessions, uh, Corey's liner notes with an interview with Elliot Shiner, the, the uh, mixing and, and recording engineer on this. And I believe for the first time we've reissued this record, we actually have the insert. With That's the right. Oh, really? That's right. Yeah, yeah, so this yeah, one comes yeah. with a little bit of a bonus. Oh, yeah, we did put this out in 2008. Nice. With uh, Kevin's previous setup, but this now finally. Here. Yeah, but this is Kevin Gray 2.0. <laughs> this is Kevin Gray, yeah, Kevin Gray 2.0. And, and and Kevin does have a different setup. He now, does so have a totally for all of those setup. of you, all of those that, that that got Kevin Gray's previous cut, which was magnificent. Yeah, the nod goes to this one. Yeah, this one's yeah, that much better. Just steps it up a bit. And yeah, thanks to the internet, I discovered there was an insert. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, my, mine didn't have the insert I, one. No, I never had I'm the sure insert. mine was a midline, you know, yeah, gadget. I, I, so, yeah, my, I issue, I didn't, my yeah. copy's a midline. So, yeah, this is, and this is, yeah. Well, so that hasn't probably great. been out since yeah. the original release. Question for you, Patrick. Yes? So how has it been working with Kevin Gray? Is he, like, super stoked on this series? Like, like or, and also, like, his, his soundstage, his perspective with some of these records, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, and Steve can kick in on this too. It's been great working with Kevin. He's yeah. been a real joy, and he is very into this. And I think very that very much so. You know, I I have to say early on, I was kind of concerned that we were really sort of pumping up this line using his name, mm -hmm. you know, to try to help us 
expressed the quality yeah, of these exactly. releases, and he's completely fine with that. And we had originally planned the car self-titled and another release, and we had decided at the last minute to go in for the coal train. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I called Kevin on a Thursday and said, is there any way you can cut this by Tuesday? And he was like, sure, I'll do it. Yeah. And then later he told me, he's like, I did that because it was coal train. And I yeah. said, kind of count. Well, on and, that. Yeah, and it was that record it. specifically. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That record. And again, like yeah. we're talking about this series, trying to give some love to some more out of the way things. That's a coal train album that isn't sort of the obvious album. Right. But it's such a great record. And oh, you've come to find out that record. a lot of people feel the same way. It's like, yeah. I love that record. And it's. That's yeah. from it's the like, My Favorite Thing session. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So it came out after he left the label, but it's got Equinox on it, mm -hmm. Central Park West. I mean, there's some, just yeah. some real classic yeah. Coltrane stuff on there. So yeah. at any rate, but yeah, Kevin, he was excited about it. And he's been really great about this. I've even, you know, asked Kevin, who's an incredibly busy person, just to say, look, if there's something that you particularly want to cut or you think is a great sounding record or something you want to recommend for the series, yes, I'm open please. to it. So, Let us know. So we're, we're, we're really tied in with Kevin, and he's been super great and fun about all this. Absolutely. So it's, yeah, it's great. And also, you should let us know what you want to see in the Rhino High yes. series in the comments. Because we're listening, and Below, you're going right? to yeah. see some things you've been asking about. Yeah. Yeah. Some things you didn't And some ask things for. you didn't ask Just for. ask for it all. <laughs> <laughs> Some things you're going to ask, to be sure. why the hell are we putting what, these yeah. out? What is this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> yes. Why? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, to that to that point, Jaco Pistorius is not like an obvious release. <laughs> no. no. But we, no, we want not. this. We, we're really trying to give this some love and make sure that people know about this record and hear how great it is. I mean, it, it is really tr a truly majestic album that yeah. people need to hear. It's yeah. deserving of the Rhino treatment. Yeah. Absolutely well put. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. So there you have it. They're selling briskly. Don't miss out. Thirty nine ninety eight, and I have to tell you, thirty nine ninety eight for an audiophile release. Oh, dude, that's a steal. Is a bargain. Yeah, that's a. We're talking about hundred dollar albums, yes, you'll love and these. I would put these up against those. You yeah. love these, yeah, a million percent. Okay. Rhino Hi-Fi available at rhino.com now. These are our two new titles: Chaco Pistorius, Word of Mouth, Van Morrison, his band, and the Street Choir, and they sound amazing. Pick them up now don't miss out they sell out limited <laughs> edition of 5000 thank you so much <laughs>